Hey, I'm Emma Garlett, and on today's episode of Paint It Black, we're honouring our Anzacs, the men and women who have fought and died in World War I for a country that, at that point, hadn't even considered them as a part of Australia's population. And this episode, I want to look into ways which we can acknowledge the Indigenous men and women who fought for Australia, and who, for one brief moment on the battlefields, were considered equal, only for it to be taken away again when they came home. I'll look at what Indigenous service looks like now in Australia and how on this Anzac Day we can once again see all veterans as equal. Before I start, this episode contains names and images of people who have died and documents with language which is no longer acceptable. Join me as I paint it black. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Those are the last lines of the ode, read out on days of remembrance for fallen soldiers. The entire poignant, sombre poem reminds us of the ultimate sacrifice so many have made in the name of protecting our future and defending our country. We acknowledge and remember their bravery, as well as the courage everyone who signed up had, not knowing whether they would return or not every Anzac Day. Soldiers of all ages and backgrounds fought and died together as equals. They were brothers in arms on the battlefield. But when they came home, some were forgotten. According to the Australian War Memorial, it's believed up to 1,300 Indigenous soldiers served in the Australian Imperial Force during the First World War. They fought alongside Allied troops in Gallipoli and the Western Front. It's believed around 300 made the ultimate sacrifice. That equates to just under 25% of Indigenous soldiers who died at war. The estimated Indigenous population in Australia at the time was 80,000. That number might change over time as volunteer researchers with the Australian War Memorial uncover more people and more stories about Indigenous soldiers because at the time it wasn't a requirement for ethnicity to be recorded at enlistment. Of the total number of Australians who went to war, 7% didn't come home. According to the Australian War Memorial, around 70 Aboriginal men are believed to have served on Gallipoli, 13 were killed in action. Men such as the Western Australian Private James Dickerson, he was part of the 10th Light Horse Regiment that was massacred at the Neck. He died of his wounds on the way to the hospital and was buried at sea. James is commemorated on the Lone Pine Memorial on the Gallipoli Peninsula and on the Roll of Honour at the Australian War Memorial. As for women, it's believed Darug woman Marion Leanne Smith from New South Wales is the only identified Aboriginal Australian woman to have served in World War I. She was an Australian-Canadian nurse. Initially, Indigenous people were banned from even signing up to go to war. The Defence Act 1903 prevented Indigenous Australians, as well as everyone not white, from entering military service. But as the war went on and thousands were killed every day, by 1917 the number of people enlisting was dwindling. The government amended the Act to allow Indigenous people to enlist, but only provided that the examining medical officers are satisfied that one of the parents is of European origin. Over the years, many have questioned why First Nations people would have signed up to fight for a country that didn't even recognise them as people. While at war, they received equal pay, were promised citizenship upon return, and were respected the same as any other soldier. They were treated as equals, a sentiment reflected in this quote from a returned soldier in who, according to the Department of Veterans Affairs, said, "'The Aboriginal soldier became my brother "'and was my brother still.'" But when they got home, it was clear not all the Anzacs were the equals they thought they had become. The white soldiers got land and war pensions, but the Indigenous soldiers didn't. But the discrimination didn't end with government policy. Indigenous veterans were often denied membership to local RSL clubs, and sometimes their children were denied enrolment into public schools. Despite serving their country, their country didn't serve them back. The Department of Veterans Affairs says Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people had the highest participation rates 
in the military as a proportion of their population in Australia in both world wars. So when war broke out in 1939, unique First Nations skills were recognised, but discrimination was still rife. And as time went on and Australians fought in wars all over the world, First Nations people were there side by side with all Australians of all cultures. Ron Bradfield was one such man who served for our country. Being in a military uniform was actually one of the best things that could hide you from a whole lot of people at that time. Since the first Anzac Day, but especially over the past 20 years, momentum has been building for better recognition of Indigenous service. Progress has been happening. In 2001, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Veterans Association led Perth's Anzac Day March. An organisation called Honouring Indigenous War Graves was founded in 2005 and conducts ceremonies at the grave sites of fallen Indigenous soldiers across WA. And last year, for the first time, around 250 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who fought in the Vietnam War were recognised by the Australian War Memorial. The War Memorial, as well as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander advocacy groups, say recognition of the history and contribution is long due and important for reconciliation. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have participated in all military conflicts, including in Vietnam, Iraq and Afghanistan, and in peacekeeping operations, including Somalia and East Timor. As of 2021, the Australian Bureau of Statistics say 3.7% of current serving Australian Defence Force members, 2.3% of previously served, identify as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. North Force was created in 1981. It is the largest army surveillance unit in the world. It has over 60% Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander personnel. Dion DeVoe was part of North Force. He has deep roots in the Australian Armed Forces and spoke to me about how Anzac Day should be a time for everyone to be able to commemorate. A lot of our mob have always been fighters, and you know, men are always warriors. Still today, you know, we're fighting in different different ways, um, but we've always had a strong sense of ourselves and our culture and our country, and wanted to protect that. There needs to be more promotion of. You know, we've got people over there that need to be, that, you know, people that have died over overseas that need to be repatriated. It's clear we still have a long way to go. I encourage all Aboriginal people to do their research, find out their family history about family members who may have served in Australia's Defence Force. We need to uncover the truth about our military past and properly recognise those men and women who served our country. The Department of Veterans Affairs say they are working towards finding out more about the contributions of Indigenous men and women, but it remains a difficult task. Different social norms and discrimination against Indigenous people throughout our history has left an incomplete historical record. This is why the full contribution of Australian Indigenous soldiers may never be completely understood. If you're wanting to begin the journey of learning about Indigenous involvement in the Australian Defence Force, these resources are a good place to start. The Australian War Memorial has in-depth information on the latest research of finding more stories of Indigenous soldiers. We found their information helpful in our research for this episode. The Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies website has a lot of emotional stories from a First Nations perspective. The book, Alfred's War by Rachel Binsali, is a great way to educate children on war and Indigenous involvement without going into graphic or scary details. Another book called Jack of Hearts by Jackie Huggins is an important biography which serves as a reminder of the contributions made by Indigenous people to our Defence Force. And for an emotional perspective, the poem The Dark Warrior by Victor Churchill Dale, an Indigenous Vietnam veteran, gives an insight into the treatment of Indigenous soldiers when they came home from war. And you can watch my full interviews with Ron and Dion on my channel. 
Thanks for watching Paint It Black with me, Emma Garlett. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode, lest we forget.